Hey you guys, welcome back to another video. So, I posted in the forum, this is a function that will absolute a vector. If you don't know what math.absolute is, basically it'll flip the negative integers to positive and keep the positive integers positive and it also works for floats. So that the vector library was missing the absolute function so I put it in. And then Svan5 kindly directed me to where to make a pull request. So I did, and everyone's like, why do you need this? Why do you need this? Blah, 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 you can just do vector.apply. And well, simply we have math.absolute. Why don't we have vector.absolute? I mean, we also have vector.floor. Why not just floor everything individually? And so I thought about that, and that really doesn't make any sense. So it would make more sense just to absolute a vector and then return the value. So, how did I do this? Well, it's very simple. If you go into the function, it's simply taking the vector, running math.absolute on everything, and then returning that out back to the variable. And what does that mean? So, it's very simple to use. You just do that. It's really easy. You just do the variable, vector.absolute, and then the vector. So, why not use function or vector dot apply. So vector dot apply for this simple of a function would be a little cumbersome. So if you just run vector dot absolute it will absolute the vector as the name implies. So this is a real world application of it. So I'm doing the position of the ABM, then detecting players in within a radius, and then I do their position I do the comparison of their position versus the center of the node. I will save the old data value of the comparison y and then I will absolute the rest of the vector or absolute the whole vector but I have the old real data of the y coordinate saved. So why not just do real comparisons on everything? Well that can get a little cumbersome. and. As you can see, I'm doing the real calculation on the specific y, which is the up and down, and then just doing the summary, which is the absolute x and z value. So why am I doing that? Why not just do vector.distance? Well, vector.distance does a, basically it's a circle, and it's a literal distance. Um, what I'm doing here is a squared distance, and I'm sure you could spend a little while and do vector dot apply and get the same value but this is a more literal and easy to write version of that basically so I'm checking if the player is below this and then they're above this which is the collision box and slightly more of the upper collision box of the pressure plate and then I'm simply doing their position and the reason it's not 0 0.5 is because I'm taking the player's collision box into account. So let me just show you that actually like working. So as you can see, I have the redstone. I have the pressure plate. So you'll notice it won't, won't activate until I get directly on it. That also works over here. because I'm calculating the player's collision box into that function and only allowing this to activate when their specific position is within the boundaries of this. So essentially it's like slightly down here, slightly up here, and then it's, let's pretend this is the pressure plate, slightly up here, and then it's slightly out here. So it's basically the normal collision, and as soon as you go past that, it activates. So the reason I'm not doing the real or the compare which is the absoluted vector of the comparison is because if I ran that in here as I'm running the real y then if I was within these two and within the x and the z uh, it would also activate the pressure plate so that's why I need to recover that old information of the y coordinate. So this is also extremely useful for pistons too. 
and why is that? So let's just go to the piston. Uh, as you can see, I have the piston pointing up and the piston sideways. So one thing is, is I can actually use the compare Y for the piston. And if the piston is pointing upwards, I can check if the player, their flat collision box, since the actual position of the player is at the zero coordinate of their collision box on the bottom. And then I check outwards since their collision box is slightly wider than the player actually is, or the player's X and Z value actually is. So what does this look like when it's being applied in reality? So if I remove this and I put that right there, if I'm even standing on this, I will get thrown into the air. If I'm over here, I won't. But if my collision box even slightly overlaps onto that, it'll throw me up in the air. So it's extremely useful. Also, if we go to piston sideways, so I'm checking the direction of the piston, and now I'm going to actually check the real Y, which is the recovered data from how it used to be before it was absoluted. So why am I doing this? Well, it's very simple. If I just did this function, and I applied it to every direction of the piston, then if the piston was up here, and I was standing right here, my position is no longer within the boundaries of where the piston arm is going to be. And so if I were to press that button using the other pointing up function, then essentially what would happen is nothing, nothing at all. And that's what used to happen before I applied this calculation to it. And so if we look at the code right here, this makes it easier so I don't have to do a bunch of code stringing off to the edge of this. Um, basically I'm checking if the player is within this radius of 2 and then if they're less than 0 0.5 which is up here and then greater than negative 1.6 which it takes a little bit extra into account so if I'm within here and here and my collision box X and Z is within this boundary then it will push me. But it's not right here. But if I'm over here, oh, gotta get a little closer. There we go. So I think the vector.absolute function is extremely useful. Um, so yeah, let me just show you it in action. And <laughs> it usually pushes me back, but I, uh, oh, oh no, it detected me. <laughs> and it killed me. So yeah, that's why the actual vector.absolute function is easier because it makes development of stuff like this way, way easier. So anyways, that's just my two cents and I'll see you guys in the next video. I will be doing a video on this because it's slightly updated. So peace out.